some people have claimed that Gamergate caused Trump and or there was an alt-right pipeline where these people were mad about games journalists. They were mad about the social justice moral panic or whatever. And then they became like far-right Nazis or they caused Brexit since you're British. <laughs> um, yeah, that never made sense to me, the, uh, the, the Brexit thing. I was very disappointed in Saga. I still am very disappointed in Saga. Um, I mean, as as we just covered, I think that's a, that's a very simplistic um, and, and kind of childish interpretation of what is a real social phenomenon. Um, when someone gets locked into an echo chamber, and we know this from studying terrorism, um, the people within that echo chamber reinforce each other's beliefs and slowly become more extreme. Usually people shut themselves into their own echo chambers. But what happened around Gamergate, I think, is that people were forcibly shoved into echo chambers or echo prisons, if you will, um, which is why I've always been fairly strongly against blocking people because I, I like to have my viewpoints challenged and I like to poke holes in other people's bubbles. And I think it's important to cross pollinate ideas and, and, and have the arguments, but many people find it exhausting. I do think for a lot of people, Gamergate was a moment, maybe the moment when they lost all trust in the media because nobody was doing the work. Um, do you know what the Gelman amnesia effect is? Yes, you ter you uh, you read an article about a topic you know about, and you're like, "Hey, they got a lot of this wrong." And then you turn the page, and it's something about something you don't know about Israel Palestine or whatever, and you're yeah. like, "Oh, this seems legit." Yeah, except in this case, I think you know people didn't forget when they turned the page. Um, Maybe because, ironically, Gamer was such an important identity to a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, it just, it just, they saw that nobody was doing the work. Nobody was making the effort. Nobody was coming and talking to them. Um, they were just mindlessly repeating what they'd been told by the very people we were criticizing, <laughs> you know, and that was it. So nobody could trust anything anymore. And. In that kind of atmosphere, disinformation uh, can run rampant because you've got no quality gatekeepers that anyone believes in anymore. Um, so I think that's that's a big part of it. And you know the the people on the right, as I say, they were being welcoming and friendly, and they were willing to have the discussions and the debates, or at least willing to pretend to. They were making the right noises about free speech and free expression, even if they didn't follow through on it. Um, and to me, that, that's, that's how it happened. It's, it's just part of a, of a larger tapestry of people losing faith in, in the media, in authority um, of any kind. But unfortunately, the, the downside to that was they ended up believing uh, other sets of people who were just as unscrupulous, unfortunately. Hi, I'm Techie on Blue. Thank you for watching another one of my Gamergate book video segments. Altogether, I've interviewed over 70 people involved with Gamergate, and I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter campaign in the coming weeks. So please, I need your support to help make this project a reality. I'm turning these 70 plus interviews into a multi-volume series of books, the first volume of which is already completed. And so I'd like you to please stay tuned for more information about the Kickstarter. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and comment. More updates will be coming in the near future. Thank you and take care.